Hello everybody, welcome to Wolverine Color Pencils Speed Paint with Commentary. Joining me tonight is Brandon Mega Potato James. Brandon, say hello. Snit, snit, everybody. That was Snicket. Is it Snicks? I thought it was more like Snit, Snit. S N I K T. Yeah, but the, when I hear Snicket, I think of like Jay and Silent Bob when Jay's like, Snicket. Well, that's probably where he got it from, right? Most likely, but Snickety Snick. I said right. Snit Snit. Wolverine Berserker, right? Hmm. Interesting. Could have been anyway. worse. What about Bloop Bloop? So, this is uh, a sketch cover that I did recently, commissioned for. Uh, for this guy from uh, Phoenix or Vegas Con, right? Vegas, Vegas Con. Yeah, yep. Vegas Con. Only took me four months. Um, so here's the thing: I was at Con, and I took a bunch of commissions because the convention uh, wasn't going too well. And uh, this was one of the guys that picked one up, a Wolverine one. Now he gave me his sketch cover at Con to color on, and I actually did a sketch. I did a sketch on it, and yeah. <laughs> The drawing came out okay. The colors came out god awful. I was using uh, Copic markers, right, Brandon? Yeah, it and just did not sit well on them. So a lot of these older sketch covers have this semi-gloss surface, um, and with markers and alcohol markers, they they, they really tend to build up. Uh, I don't know. Gummy tar feel, like a gummy tar feel. I say. Yeah, it's kind of like trying to draw on a dry erase or color on a dry erase board, you know, like it just sort of builds and smears up. Um, so I asked him if uh, I could just take the piece home and put it on my own paper and send it off to him, mail it off to him. When I came home, I had this funny problem of uh, my, 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 my wife's father, uh, I had to get bone marrow cancer. It was a whole crazy thing. So I had to fly out to Indianapolis and ate up my summer. Suffice to say, uh, I sat around practicing on a bunch of these older sketch covers, which I have a grip of because just coincidentally, my buddy Joe was working at a comic book shop at the time when these came out and gave me like a hundred of these older sketch covers. Uh, and they just sort of sat in a box. Um, and I messed around with color obviously uh, the copic markers and i tried what, what was those uh, primers and adhesive sprays at mm -hmm. the end of the day the thing i got to work out was color pencil color pencil seems to work on any surface uh, so i said why don't i do uh color pencil and see how long it takes so i did an obi one and it took me about four hours longer than it normally would to color and then i did this one it was about the same but uh, I enjoyed working on color pencil so much, I'm like putting away the Copic markers. So I'm like, no, nah, I don't care if it takes a little bit longer. I, I like this look. So this is a scan of the final colors, you know, scanned in. So it came on nice. Um, this isn't any, if you hold this up to the, the actual one, it's just like this. I haven't added weird glows or I got it pretty close to the final version. In some ways, the final version is even brighter just because of the way color pencil tends to reflect light. So how I got this drawn on to the sketch cover was I have an app. This I don't have a recording of, so you're just going to have to bear with me, folks. There's an app you can get on your phone called Camera Lucidia, L-U-C-I-D-I-A, mm -hmm. Lucidia, or AR Lucidia, depending on if you're using Android or iPhone. And what it does is let you import an image, and you can place your phone above a piece of paper, line the image up, lock it, and then you could zoom in on that image, but it never changes the placement. So if you zoom in on that image, you, you can and put your hand under the phone, your pencil will look really big, and you can basically trace any image on any surface that your phone could sit under. So I have my phone sit on a cube that's placed about 12 inches up, you know those little storage cubes you can make? Mm -hmm. I just got one of those storage cubes that placed my phone down. Put my hand nice. underneath and then trace this image underneath. I, I got to record this process for people so they can see it. But it's it's like projecting your art with a light board, essentially. But you're using your phone. So um, I came up with the technique when I was going to do some sketch cards for Upper Deck earlier this year. And 
by the time I figured out how to do it, uh, I ran out of time to do the cards and they got all mad at me. I was like, well, fuck off. So, you know, <laughs> um, but I have here applied the technique to creating sketch covers. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the video. Brandon, let me know when you can see the video and then I'll go ahead and hit play. So briefly, what you're seeing here is uh, the cam yeah, this is camera zoomed in. I'll go ahead and hit play now. So what I've done is I've drawn the image uh, onto the, the paper and then really loosely and then drew and in inked the final stuff and then shaded him with red mechanical lead. Uh, the reasoning for the shading with the red mechanical lead versus just going with straight color pencil is that I can focus on the, the lighting with the red mechanical lead and not have to like worry about what colors to use. So there's two things to think about when you're coloring, value and hue. Value is the black and whiteness of something and hue is the color. Now I'm doing the value here with a red mechanical lead versus pencil um, for two reasons. One, because I'm drawing with the red mechanical lead, so as I ink it all blends together, which is nice. And two, when you when you put color over, it's going to feel even warmer. In um in painting, like if you do like acrylic painting or oil painting, there's this uh, technique of painting with a burnt sienna base. Mm -hmm. You know, you do the painting in a burnt sienna, let it dry, and then put your paints over it, and it makes the whole thing feel warmer. It's the same basic concept. So this this is just shaded with red mechanical lead, Pentel, the descriptions in the box, um, in the info box. And then once I get that all done, then I'm using color pencil. I'm starting with lightly going over the red with the base color that I want for uh, for whatever section. So in this case, this is, this is going to be his brown and gold costume. So this mm -hmm. is going to be like a brown that I'm kind of going over first. And pretty lightly, if you go over it a couple times, you can, it will start to tint the, uh, the colors the way you want it to go. And I try to like work with the middle tone, then to the light, and then use the dark to push it. But here you're going to see me kind of jump around because I was trying to figure out the best way to do that. But that seems to be the way I work now. This is, only t this is the the second sketch cover you've ever done with just all colored pencils, though, right? Yeah. The Obi-Wan was the first one and then the second one. So, I mean, you're still learning as you go, right? It's not like you're just like, oh, I know exactly where I'm going with this. Yeah, but I grew up using color. Like the weird part about all this is the way I'm coloring now is basically the way I, be, I I colored even in high school color pencil. Like I was actually pretty good with it. I just um I gave out color pencil for like 20 years because I really killed my hand ones on a piece, and then mm -hmm. I just got <laughs> <laughs> I did this piece, this giant Alphonse Mucha piece, man, when I was in the army and for a friend, and, and uh, there was about. 300 flowers and each one had oh, wow. 30, 30 layers of color each you do the math. oh jeez yeah so it's a good friend <laughs> yeah well you know i was i was uh, i was dumb and in love you know yeah. never even got a kiss out of that one so oh wow yeah so that's when i learned never make art for for girls you're into or guys or whatever <laughs> just make art for yourself or fans just never for you know <laughs> just total waste of my time but um so you can see it's starting to tint more now now this is sped up four times mm -hmm. so this video is about three hours long uh so it took about 12 hours to do this cover the full the the three hour version will be uh up with this so we'll do this stream here for about another 30 minutes or so mm -hmm. and um and then you guys, if you guys want to see the full three hour version, that'll be up. And now, how'd your hand feel after this one? Like, did it? Okay, no, I'm not. I'm not doing much pressure at all. And then when I when I eventually will apply a little bit of pressure, it's just in spots. So I've gotten really good over the last ten years, especially of not pressing hard when I work. Mm -hmm. And you can see I'm holding a lot. Of, I'm mostly holding the pencil from the back until I get up close with little tick marks. See there from the back. Right, right there, that 
that holding the pencil from the back will mean you can't press hard. Right. So, I mean, I've I've only I don't follow a lot of people who use colored pencils or pencil art much, but I mean, I've seen in those Drew Suzanne videos you sent me where he does that, where he holds it from the back and you know the different spots, the way he holds the pencil for different uh, different effects. You know, harder lines, softer stuff. Yes, yeah, so when you want more of like the texture lines, you hold it a little bit closer up. Now these are polychromos <clears throat> color pencils, uh -huh. um, and I have a few Prismacolors, but I use the polychromos, and they're an oil based, and the the Prismacolors are wax based. So these these just have a these really have a nice smooth smooth glideness to them. They're not they don't mush like. The Prismacolors. I don't know how to describe it. Prismacolors almost feel like, you know that You're craft. You're the paper. Well, you know that craft macaroni and cheese mix when you kind of don't mix it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it kind uh -huh. of like squishes like craft macaroni. And I, cheese. I, I know craft macaroni very well. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't trying to like, you know. Oh no, it's fine. I do love craft macaroni. Yeah, if craft craft macaroni would like to sponsor me, they can. I love it. But <laughs> yeah, different. Di it's weird how much like how much different, you know, markers and color pencils, different brands affect the way you make the art, you know, like you're saying, one's more wax, one's more oil based. But I mean, a lot of people don't know that when they buy stuff like that, color pencils or markers, you don't, it's not like you just know that, you know, you got to learn that. And one thing I think is cool about experimenting with all the different kinds, you get to learn what goes good with what, how it feels on the paper and what you can kind of control. Some of the things you should keep in mind when picking, uh, tools for commissions especially commissions is light fastness so light fastness is how your colors will hold up over time how they're going to appear when they're sitting out in the light Who, what's going to hold its color you know as long as possible and with the polychromos there's 120 polychromos colors and i believe 103 or 113 i can't remember i think it's 103 of those colors have a light fastness rating of like the highest rating possible. <laughs> if you go to Polychromos' site, you can see which colors those are. <clears throat> they have a little PDF that you can download and see which ones. And so I've got them all. I bought the 120 set uh, about a year ago. And then uh, I have whittled down the 103 colors. And then there's a few Prisma colors that I still use here and there because there's just some colors that the polychromos don't have like there's like these pale greens and stuff like that that they, they don't they don't have but these polychromos they they hold up really nicely and uh they'll last as long as possible nothing lasts forever but, you know <laughs> you know like trying to hold on to earth, planet earth right now brandon like <laughs> that's questionable so you know you can see there, I don't know, had to add back a little white kind of, kind of uh, drew in the eyes. So with, because uh, I can't remember right now, because I've been watching you do colored pencils the last couple of weeks. Do you, do you go dark to light when you do the Copics too? Or is this just with the colored pencils, you go dark to light? No, I'm going mid-tone to light mid -tone. than dark. Okay. It's the same. I, these are all transparent mediums so color pencil is semi-transparent there's some opaqueness to it um but they're very similar to watercolor or very similar to copic markers which is why they they all blend together really nicely um you want to kind of start in the the, the 50 percent area if you think from a value standpoint start in the middle tone and then go to like from third go from 50 to 30 and then down to 70 to punch that color forward. So what you see me here doing now is adding the 70% with this very light little black to push some of this stuff forward. And I'm also trying to render the shape while I do it. And then I go back in with the 50 to kind of halo around those edges and figure out how much of the little the whiteness I want to keep. I don't want to fill the whole thing up with color. Mm -hmm. So I want like a hot spot of whiteness on the paper and then you're blending with the 50 percent using the 70 to punch and then at the very end you can really kind of if you want to in spots kind of 
push it forward, but you want to be a little, I think with colored pencil, you need to be careful how much black you put on. Because part of the charm is being able to see into, into the, um, the blends to see into the different layers of color. So, and, if we and you have again, like, go ahead. I was going to say, do you have like a rough of this you do before, like a color Not rough? Not much, no. No, I just do a couple <laughs> tests and then I'm like, all right, I know which way I want to go. Like, I, I know, right? Like, there's no, people have been asking me, you do, you do a color guide? No, I've done so many color guides that at this point, like, other than testing a few of the pencils out to kind of go, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good enough, moving forward. You know, like I kind of know how they're going to work out. So I've been a little fortunate in that area that I've gotten to the point where it doesn't require a ton of figuring out. Right. So if I zoom nice forward further. here a little bit, let's see if I can zoom forward without crashing the fucking video. Right. Right. Wants to, it wants to not operate now, right? Is that it? Yeah. Look at that, Brandon. I and broke it. Now it doesn't want to. Now it doesn't want to. That's great. We do this live, everybody. I know, right? <sighs> All right. Let's, let's open this back up. This is so much fun. We'll go to my render drive, uh, temp speed. I had to do four revisions of this. And this time I'll open it up with VLC. Let's see at that. Thank you. Thank you for playing. And then we'll jump to the 15 for it. Here we go. So let's get back to it. And you could see here some of the warmth that I've come back into the you can see up in these areas here. So if we zoom. The one thing I could tell you is here I stuck with the browns on his central area and kind of stuck with it. Uh -huh. um, I think the thing to do is once you get these colorations working across the character, I think you should keep whatever color, the, like these browns, if he has more browns on him, I should have definitely just kept doing all the browns first and then something else because um, I'll jump to the yellows next and what happens is when I get to certain parts of his body I'm like oh yeah what color is that I use oh, fuck I can't remember like you get in the mindset of rendering out a certain color you know a color, color scheme and I just think uh -huh. that once you're in that well that jumped around once you're in that groove you should stick with so here I'm going to jump to the, the yellow so got this gold and it could just haloing Call it haloing, but you're kind of like tinting the the red. Pretty quickly, you can see you're tinting the red with the uh, the yellows. And the ink is a burnt sienna, so it it absorbs the color nicely. And it goes. It goes good with that the red tint you already have in there. It gives like the yellows kind of an orange tint to it, and the browns have a nice that like you said a little burnt look to it. Well, the one thing I tried before I did any of these was I tried uh, I did a little piece on a, one of these covers, and I colored it like a Hulk green, you know. And I knew if I could get the red tint with greens to look really good, because green over red should turn to shit brown. So if it looked really vibrant and green, then I knew it would work with any other color. Uh, and I got it to look really good. So when that, that little Hulk arm test came out well, um, I was like, all right, so I can know I can do this with any color. Because <laughs> believe me, if you put green over red, and it, you're going to find out pretty quickly whether it works or not. So it works, you know. And then moving forward, this is the only way you're going to do sketch covers, right? Or all commissions or just sketch covers? Uh, I'll be doing this. Uh, commissions, I'll be doing either this, which I'm calling uh, softies. And then, <laughs> yeah, this is my softy look. And then, or the uh, saucy look. So softies or saucies. 
That needs a food name, like the soft tacos. <laughs> or, you know, like milkshakes. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. My buddy Mike was like, will you mix the two? I'm like, no, fuck off. You know? <laughs> well. Yeah. Call them snotties. <laughs> but. I mean, at that I point, like you're soft. just doing like an acrylic base and, you know. I, I, right. You know, guys, just leave me alone. You know, like, but they always, you gotta mix shit. Just fucking leave me alone. Like, I just wanna make some stuff. It's, is it not enough? I mean, I already get, like, very few views as it is, you know? Like, <laughs> much more do I have to do for so little views, you know? Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, it's good that you can do both and mix both. I mean, it's not like people can just do that. And... Yeah, but I, I don't want to mix it for a reason. And it's that I want each one to have it completely its own look. I don't want the saucy looking like color pencil, vice versa. What happened with the Kobix was I started using color pencils to clean up the Kobix. Got to the point where I was like, fuck using the Kobix. You know, and so when you put the color pencil next to a the runny saucy, they look completely different, you know, which is what I want. I don't want this blending. I don't want the in-between. You know, I want one person to go, I like this. I want the other person to say, I like that. I don't want the in-between. Because then it all just starts to look the same. It's like, oh, this will have splatter, and it'll have color pencil, and it'll have splatter. It's like, I don't... Another goal of mine, my personal goals, is to be able to scale these up. You know? Like, if I did a small commission, being able to scale it up to, like, a 24 by 36. And, you know, color pencils scale up, or you just... You burn through them, but... You know, you can charge... You know, you can charge $1,000 for a giant color pencil piece. Right. Yeah. So, all right. You can kind of see how that's going. Let me jump a little bit more forward here. Get to the skin tones. Skin tones are pretty easy. Now that's a Prismacolor color pencil right there. So I'm using that as a basis for the skin tones just because it has this certain look. It's like peach or something. People are like, what color specifically? I'm like, I don't know, man. They don't really look at them too much. Like I look at the tone on the color pencil and go, that'll do. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like there's no there's no tutorial I'm following here. There's no either there's a DeviantArt tutorial, there's a, something on a gum road. Like this is just me going back to something I haven't done since I was eighteen. You know, and I'm thirty nine now, so it's been a while. Fun part about the, all these little tick marks and cross hatching I'm doing this is actually a lot like the uh, cross hatching that they did in the 90s like the Scott mm -hmm. Williams it's just with color you don't notice it you know <laughs> like, like if this was ink it would look like a lot of that Scott Williams metallic cross hatching but if you do a color pencil then it's like oh look at all those little tick marks and you're like yeah What's cool about it is like when you zoom, like I, since I do a lot of thumbnails for the pictures, I get to see them, but you zoom in, sometimes you can't see it or, you know, just in the videos and stuff. But if you look at some of the pictures, whether you post on your DVR and stuff, you zoom in and you could see all these little hatch lines, the little hairs on Wolverine's arms, you know, the little costume nicks and stuff. So it's pretty cool that you can get really fine detail with the colored pencils as if you were inking it or, you know, you're, you're, it's colored ink, basically, because you're doing the colored pencils, but you got all these cool, sharp lines that I like that. Sometimes, not saying your Copics don't show it, but it's cool to see with the colored pencils, all the little color nicks and lines and such. So, Yeah, I spent a lot of time on the hair, making his arms hairy. <laughs> um, it's, again, it's hard with these cameras because they got to zoom in, and there's only so many... Plus, there's only so much resolution that... These, these things can capture these webcams, you know. Um, the only thing that could capture more is if I had, like, a DSLR or something. But, like, that's 500 to to $1,000, you know, for DSLR guys. And I'm not spending you, can still see, you can still see everything on this. Yeah. It's good. The, I, I put up the final, like, there's those high reses, so, you know. Yeah, you got you had the final pictures up, so. 
I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a fucking camera. So, you know, 24 people can view the video. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, guys, you know, like, I, I end up with a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, and, you know, there'll be a whole other conversation. You know? Right. But there's only so much I can do. Soon. Soon. It's coming, everybody. What I have done here is I've gone through and tried to, like, make certain that the videos got some sharpness and some clarity and you know that's as close as you can get get it to the uh the final piece let's go ahead and just speed this up a little bit <coughs> and we'll get back to his claws so kind of fucked up his belt a little bit i inverted his belt buckle but i was like oh well now the claws were a little weird because there's grays and blues and greens in them. So I started with this sort of bluish gray. And then I'll work through these greens. And uh, I was like, these hard surface, hard surfaces, hard surface rendering. The, the trick to remember is it's going to be darker the closer it is to you and lighter as it falls back. So... That's the only thing going through my head at this point. Like, <laughs> it's like, just remember to keep it a little darker in the front. How long did this whole front hand take you? <clears throat> Hours. Probably spent hour, two or three hours alone. Yeah. It ate up a lot of time. But, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's worth it. I mean, a lot of people would rush and just fill it in or not take the time to match all the pieces, you know? So, it's one thing that looks, like, good about all this, that you made sure every section has the same amount of, like, quality. It wasn't like you got halfway down and you're like, oh, this fucking's taking too long, and you just started filling it in. So, well, yeah, one of the really... things I'm trying to do here, Brandon, is slow down the time. I'm not trying to get a bunch of commissions out. What I want to do is do one good commission and one, I mean, one great commission and then another great commission. I don't care about, I'm, I'm really getting away from this art hustle game. You know, like, I really, I don't know, I'm, I'm just, there's other things in my life, you know, and... I get, you know, as artists, we all want to make money, but um, I'd rather be able to start producing things that I, I want to keep producing things that I'm proud of, you know, and then, you know, charge right. a little bit more. But then, you know, if there's a limit to how much you can charge on the Internet, then, you know, I'd rather just do the things that quality over quantity, right, is the goal. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, and I do. I know this. It's harder to like knock someone off when people are just unwilling to put the time in. But there's no fast way to somehow like get around what I'm doing. You know, like here, like you, if you're gonna achieve a similar look, you're gonna have to spend the time. And if you're unwilling to, it's gonna show. You know, there's no like filter you can throw in Photoshop that's gonna give you all this bullshit. Like you're gonna have to actually do the effort. So. And I think with color pencil, like, I think people, since everyone, you know, people have all kind of had an experience with color pencils one time in their life. Mm -hmm. So I think when they see you do something that's super clean and got lots of details and they go, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, they know how hard it is. Like, I think they have some sense. <laughs> like, not a lot of people ever use Copic markers, right? So if you achieve something really cool with them, they don't really know, you know, how much effort that took. Right. But anyone can get some color pencils. They're pretty cheap. Get some color pencils. Sit down. Let me know if you can get it done faster. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see how that gets done, you know. Um, but, you know, the slowing down part's nice because it's still faster than, I mean, 12 hours is nothing. It really isn't. I mean, not in art, you know. So... And this is 12 hours for basically, I mean, it's two pages worth of content. Basically, like a 10 by 14, almost 11 by 17 
sort of area, you know? So. Yeah, it's a huge chunk of, you know, it's a big commission. It's not like you just did the, the headshot on the front or even just shrunk down Wolverine and did it on the front. It's a double spread. Yeah, it's full figure with perspective plus head. So now you can see I'm trying to add some creams into the blade to make the whites and the blade add uh, some kind of creaminess. And then I'm like, I don't know. So the minute I start not knowing what to do, I just start working on the next blade, <laughs> tinting that one now. And you can see there's a piece of paper I'm using to keep from smudging. That's called a glassine. It's kind of like wax paper or tracing paper, but it's designed for uh, acrylic and oil mediums and stuff so to not smear. A lot of people use it to put over pieces to protect it, but you mm -hmm. can, it works just the same as a as a guard hand guard. So. How's the chat room looking, Brandon? Where are we at here? 32 minutes. So let me just go ahead and zoom it forward. So you can see here between the two blades, you know, there's a little bit of blues I've put in here. There's a little bit of greens I've put in here and then I've outlined the, the burnt sienna lines with the color to tint them the color too. And I made it really dark, as dark as I could <coughs> up here to push it forward. Now, did, it, did you run into any kind of things that you would consider a problem or you you just mean? like, you know, normal people have problems when they're making art or something goes something the way they don't like it or they don't really like the way a certain color looks or anything or did everything go perfectly smoothly? <laughs> no, the only thing that got a little weird is I just inverted his belt buckle. It should be black with the red X and I kind of fucked that around. That would be my only complaint. I was like, well, who's really going to keep track of that, right? So. I didn't really think about it until you pointed it out. Right. Now we will all shame you for it. No, I'm fortunate in that this color pencil thing is pretty easy for me. Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't say that. You know me, Brandon. How often have I right. said that about anything I do, right? Like, yeah. you know. <laughs> It not just, to toot my own horn, but uh, I'm not saying I'm the world's greatest with it, but to color pencil at this level is just not hard for me. Right. You know, the hardest part was just working out, like, will it work on this substrate? You know, on these sketch covers. I've since been trying to, like, on my commissions, find paper that mimics the the same material. That's been the hardest part. Is like a lot of people hate these sketch covers, and I did too until I started doing this with it. And now I'm like, oh, I like this material. I've yet to completely find a material that emulates it. There's some Daler, was it Daler and Rowney? What was it called? It's called Borden and Riley. They make a 234 Borden and Riley. They have number 234 Paris ink paper that has a similar feel to this. Um, but not quite. So I got a few. I've been. I've sent out samples from every cardstock place there is. I've yet to find anything remotely close. Like I got another thirty dollars worth of paper coming in this week just to try out stuff. You know. Which you'll probably hate most of it. <laughs> probably. Probably. This is just a time game, man. This is just putting in the time. And if you jump over, you can see how these three things pop out. We'll go ahead and move forward. Working on the hand. This hand took fucking forever. I think it was three hours. Something like that. Yeah, I remember I, I joined in, I think, somewhere around when you were starting the claws with the hand and it was around like 9 or 10. You're just still chipping at it when I had to go to bed. I'm going to be honest. If this were at a convention, I would just tint this red shade. See what I did here with the hand? 
uh-huh. I would just tint something <laughs> like, like it would look like that, you know? And there'd probably be just like headshots and shit. But... <clears throat> but it is fun. I like, I do like taking my cartoony, designy shapes and rendering them three dimensionally, you know? Like that mm-hmm. is, that is fun. Feels more like sculpting at some point. Which you are not good at. I'm not, but somehow on paper I can f- fake it pretty well. Like, <laughs> it's weird, right? Like <laughs> Rob, Rob does have an artistic weakness, people. He does, I swear. <laughs> I'm go ahead and just zoom forward. You said it took 12 hours total for this piece? Yeah, 12 hours. And that's from initial lines, inks, colors, everything? No, just in the coloring. I spent another... Oh, okay. I spent another four hours drawing it. It was pretty easy to draw it. So, so probably 16 hours total. Yeah. Here, I'm just hoping that I don't waste a lot of color pencil darkening areas. Mm-hmm. You know? So, that's the trick. Is like, how much do I have to put down to darken it without just... You know, you don't want to keep darkening over color um, and just wasting color pencils. So it's like trying to figure out what that is. <laughs> At some point, you're just going to have to do it, you know, waste a little bit of it. But they they last a while. I mean, if if you really get this, this shading thing down first with the red pencil and then lay the color over it, you can really... You can really get by without using tons of the color pencil and then leaving some of these little white seams if you look around I'm leaving some of these white seams around his gloves open just because it's a fabric you know mm-hmm. has a sheen to it I mean <clears throat> I know you don't really care that much about likes and views but have you noticed more of a like reaction to these colored pencil pieces compared to Copics or no. I mean, is people really, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Brandon, nothing's helped my career, you know, not doing a game form recover, not doing transformers, not doing Copics, not doing watercolor, not doing nothing. Nothing has helped. <laughs> not doing these videos, entire... not doing the YouTube channel. I just Everyone do this just for myself. Colors. At this point, like I, I do this because I enjoy doing it. I make these videos so I can, in case I forget what I did, I can come back here and listen to myself talk about it. None of this has helped. <laughs> you know? They don't help get future projects or work. You know? When we put out our holiday calendar, people will love it. Yeah, well, I've I've accepted. <laughs> I'm going to just not be appreciated in my own time, you know. Just getting on with it. So let's go ahead and zoom forward. You can see they're using that dark to pop out the fingers, right? That's the trick. Like, how much lightness do you put? And then where do you place the darks to pop things forward? That's the question, Brandon. So, the the guy who wanted the piece, Brett, he wanted the classic Wolverine. But I also wanted to honor the blue and yellow costume. And then the X-Men Street Fighter game, is a fighting game put out by Capcom years ago. Um, he had the blue and yellow costume, but they had a brown and gold remix recoloration of that costume in-game. Mm-hmm. So this costume back here is an ode to that costume. Where it was the blue and yellow layout, but with the brown and gold uh, color scheme. And only you would know that. 
I mean, somebody knows. Somebody knows, but I'm just saying, like, to just be like, you know what? I'm going to throw in here this random video game (laughs) reference edit. I would have just been like, this is going to be black and gray in the bag. And we'll zoom ahead here. You can kind of see. And I'm being a little looser too, so it's got nice little like pencil marks and stuff and little ticks. And, and we zoom ahead. And that's actually an indigo blue I'm throwing into the shade. Now, cool part about colored pencils are because they're semi-opaque, is that you can layer in different colors and see them. The downside is a lot of people will go way too rainbow. You got to be careful not to be tempted to do that, where you put blues plus purples plus greens plus yellows and everything. You, you can see some guys that do a lot of mixed media and their art. You start to see like everything turns into a rainbow scheme. Uh-huh. And that's just because you're like, oh, and I can throw this color and that color. And then it's fun to do. But then after a while, it all starts to look like crazy 70s psychedelic shit. But I'm putting just a faint little bit of blue in there. So it's got some extra uh, color. If I zoom ahead a little bit here, let's see if it crashes. It's going to crash. It's going to, <laughs> going to wait for it to catch up. The joys of doing this live. I know, right? Yeah, I think it... Let me reopen it. Well, it's an 8 gig file, so, you know. <laughs> Let's see. Wow, well, it doesn't want to really... Come on, read. So ridiculous. Well, next time I'll be copying this file over to my hard drive. So this doesn't happen. Wow, really? <laughs> you know what I mean, Brandon? Like yeah. it worked uh, just I was, fine. I was, I was laughing at uh, Lefty Flip drawings in the chat room. He was like, or she was like, any classic Capcom fans? No. But I like that you spelled no wrong and then retracted it. <laughs> well, don't don't get people on spelling around here, Brandon. I'm gonna... No, I, I like no, I know. I just like that the person retracted it and fixed it. I was like, I knew what you meant. You didn't have to fix your spelling. I know the classic Capcom stuff. I, what I meant was, and I'll reiterate for those most people when they're doing art, like let's say I want a Wolverine, they think okay, blue and yellow. Sometimes they'll do the yellow and brown, or they'll ask you what version you want. Not many artists would on their own think of doing a reference to a video game costume from an older video game. As to where most people nowadays would just use newer references or the most popular costumes. So it was just, it was funny that, you know, you being such a video game nerd was just like, I'm going to go with an old school Capcom game. That's what I meant by that. I would have put Wolverine in a Pikachu outfit, personally, but that's just my choice. See, right around here, it doesn't want to... starting to piss Rob off, is what it's doing. We're about to get the Rob Rage! No, just... It's <laughs> disheartening. It's disheartening I can get a hold of our our uh, IT guy if you want yeah thanks <laughs> Rob we got a problem with the video Rob can you can you fix it Rob yeah see we're at the 145 it just it loads it just won't okay come here you little dick let's see if it copies over Maybe it's just across the network and wants to be a little bitch. <laughs> do, 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 do. So we can look at the final piece, right? Where we're kind of going. You can see here, if I zoom in, you can see some of these little blues. Like you can see some of the blues in there, some of the blues in there. 
you can see right there if we zoom in the blues which give you a, a little extra depth almost And then, yeah, you can see, again, using the blues right there. The blue, the indigo blue, and then the black on top of that to push it a little forward. Let's see if that worked. Let's see yeah, it turned out nice. <clears throat> okay, let's try it one more time. Oh, even from here it doesn't want to doesn't want to jump to I guess it probably only wants to go <laughs> I know a way around this I know a way there's always a way Brandon if it doesn't want to load up one way okay it will load up another so we're just gonna go over to the one I had uploaded All right all right Look at this. And I can come right into here and jump to the 149 mark and the 152 and we'll just watch it this way. So, <laughs> see folks, <laughs> there's always another way. All right? We try to do it one way, we'll do it another. So, let's go ahead and just jump forward. And let me get, let's see where... And this fucking hand just wouldn't end. That's why I worked on the back, because I was like, the hand won't fucking end, man. Just drawing a hand forever. <laughs> so here's an extra way to punch up the color pencil, as I'm using a zebra uh, ballpoint pen. It's a black zebra ballpoint pen, which is nice because you can shade with it, and it won't smear. So I'll zoom ahead. And then right around these little edges here, wherever the color halo, you can, if you throw a little saturated color into there, it glows it out. So if you, if you look at surfaces, wherever the darkest point would be, like the rim of a chrome edge or something, right next to that dark point will be a lot of color saturation. It's a little little art tip there. Don't give away all your secrets. Jeez. Yeah, the other secret is just endure the fucking... Endure pain. The pain. Yeah, endure the pain. So, kind of jump ahead <clears> here. And then we'll jump ahead. So you can see it's just the same colors over and over again. Gold, the oranges. There's that right there, that little cream I was showing people. You can see the way the cream works. Yeah, I do little tutorials while I fucking work on the shit. So that's like a off green, like a creamish green I put in there. Works nice on the metals. And if we zoom all the way toward the end, we can... Now the background I did with Distress Ink. So you see, I'll go there and I'm going to erase the whole smudges and stuff with a kneaded eraser. And then I got the scattered straw Distress Ink. And I'm just going to go around the edges. Stamp around. This this gets done in about 20 minutes tops, 15, 20 minutes. Super fast. So here it should get done like almost instant instantaneously. Yeah. And I really think you're better off going with the complementary color for these backgrounds and a contrast. 
So if he's mostly orange and gold, just go with a gold background. Like, don't be like, I'll do blue, that'll pop it out. Like, don't. It, don't like don't be too creative <laughs> with with that shit like just complimentary is fine so it's a little hard to see some of the colors there because the contrast uh, the johnny johnny asks is that baking paper rob baking the paper? paper the paper you're using for your hand it's the waxing paper no it's glassine not waxing glassine paper. yeah it's not baking paper it's glassine Oh, I thought you said waxing. No. no. <laughs> so but you said glassing, and it's like a wax paper, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's it's intended for protecting oil and acrylic, so it won't smudge. Wax paper will smudge your shit. So glassing is just you just it's just gla g l a s s i c i n e glassing. So. And then uh, unlimited color ass subsurface scattering. Yeah, man, it's not a 3D model, so I wouldn't, you know. He's talking about, like, you know when your ears have red in them because light shines through? Uh -huh. That's called subsurface scattering. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't think about it too much. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, I know we all want to add, like, real technical terms to old stuff to make it seem like it's way more important than it really is. Like, you could be like, look, that's subsurface scattered because you can see through the... Nah, it's just don't, you know, I, I don't want to you know, the ambient occlusion pass. Like, guys, it's fucking... I just, I've seen artists do that recently in the past couple of years, especially the guys that paint three-dimensionally. They like to mm -hmm. go, here's my ambient occlusion pass. Here's my subsurface scattering pass. It's like, you're not doing a pass. You're just going over your own art like, again and again. So I don't really get too into that. What all I'm trying to do, folks, is leave these little white hot spots open and put color around the edges to give it some color saturation, some life and depth, you know? Mm hmm And to add texture, you know, so you can see into it. And for it to pop on the page. Like that's it. It's is not that complicated. That's it. Any questions, Brandon? Nope. I think I asked everything throughout it. I mean, I got nothing. Usually I got something. I got nothing this time. <laughs> the three-hour version uh, will be live with this, so you can go check that out. And then uh, I'll try to put together a like four- or five-minute version, you know? No like a four or five minute like edit where it just sort of cuts out parts and times to music and stuff but we'll see how that goes folks all right everybody i got other stuff to do there's stuff to do brandon there's stuff to do are we hmm? yeah i'll ask you yeah we should talk later all right brandon let's say goodbye say goodbye brandon bye bye everybody <laughs> let's just drag this one on keep talking